Hey everybody and welcome to the 20th episode of the Chainsaw Reacts podcast. Today's podcast, guys, is covering two topics today and those topics are number one, Tom Holland is our new Spider-Man. I'm going to talk about my thoughts about his casting, my thoughts about what the films he's going to be involved in are going to be like, the Sony films, the solo Spider-Man films, and I'm also going to be talking about his involvement or what I hope to see his involvement in Captain America Civil War and then also in the other MCU films we've already uh, been uh, that we've already know about that's going to be happening up to phase three and then getting into phase four maybe we'll talk a little about some speculation there but basically mainly the Sony solo films and basically phase three I would like to see his involvement so that's the first topic going to get into all of that and the second topic will be Batman Arkham Knight discussion kind of first impression ish no spoilers I'm not going to get into spoilers about the actual story or anything like that so if you've been kind of hesitant about that topic I'm not going to get into spoilers in the description of course where all the time starts for the two topics but there'll be no spoilers for the Batman Arkham Knight talk and the second topic so let's not waste any time let's not you know keep rambling let's get into the first topic which is of course Tom Holland is our new Spider-Man now, originally when this news broke, I was thinking about making an individual um, you know, video about this uh, news because this is a humongous piece of information because it's been speculation upon speculation upon speculation, rumor, it's confirmed, it's not confirmed, and all this other stuff about who's going to be paying Spider-Man. I mean, literally, I think it was like a week or two weeks ago, Asa Butterfield, apparently from all the websites, were saying he's confirmed, he's signed, he's about to sign, he's the best pick ever Sony and Marvel are going to sign him and look he, he was kicked out of the running supposedly a week ago and now we have Tom Holland and like I said I was thinking about making a video about it but I decided not to because I wanted to wait for more information to come out because honestly there was going to be more information. More info is going to come out about this casting because it's a huge deal. This is not like, okay, Marvel has casted the supporting character for the upcoming Black Panther film and they've casted that. This is Spider-Man that Marvel has been wanting to get back since the first Iron Man film in 2008. Since the MCU was created and it's been hugely successful, Marvel has been dying to get Spider-Man and the other properties that they have sold the rights to uh, live action out to other uh, studios they've wanted them back and now they have the granddaddy of them all spider-man back so this there had to be more news that would come out about this and i was correct so initially let's start with the first official announcement him cast him i think it's a pretty good casting choice i have no issue with it i think with the kids that they were announcing or kind of saying they're in the running most of them i thought they were good they, they would be good choices whatever direction they went there was a couple of them that they kind of threw in the mix that were supposedly on the listing of potential casting for spider-man i was kind of going eh, not really but tom holland was one of the few that i thought would be a good choice. Uh, Asa Butterfield, of course. I mean, at this point, it, it got to the point where I was like, just announce who it is. I'm tired of the speculation. I'm tired of the false rumors. I'm tired of all this crap. Just announce it, and they finally did. Now, what I really like about uh, the waiting around a couple days to basically talk about this, because more information has come out, stating that he has screen tested with Robert Downey Jr., and from one, one source I've read, I've only seen this in one place, now, this could have been printed out or printed, wow, or could have been put in uh, more websites, is that Tom Holland is the only person that was basically being screen tested. He was the only person to also screen test with Captain America, a.k.a. Chris Evans as well, which I think is really, really cool. So if he was the only person supposedly that screen tested with Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans as well, Captain America and Iron Man, that's a big deal. That means Sony and Marvel pro, uh, thought that you know this is going to be the guy, so they definitely wanted to see what his acting chops against the leader of the MCU, Robert Downey Jr., and the second leader of the MCU, Captain America. So they had to do that, and of course, he's being introduced officially confirmed. He will be in Captain America Civil War. Now, the film has been in production uh, for about two months, and they have stated that uh, Tom Holland is getting sent off to go to the set of Captain America Civil War to be filming. Now, it's not confirmed how long he will be there. Uh, there's been rumors and speculations. We're getting 
doing that again. He'll be shooting for about a week. He'll be shooting for two weeks. He'll be shooting a couple of scenes. He's only in one scene. For me, I think this is a huge deal. And this film is packed with like 500,000 characters. Spider-Man has to be one of the focal points because you're already introducing Black Panther for the very first time in this film. But Spider-Man, realistically, we all know, is a more important character than Black Panther at this point. The Black Panther solo film would be the most important thing when it comes out. But for Captain America Civil War, the two most important things are Captain America and Iron Man fighting. The second thing is, as we know it's now officially confirmed, is Spider-Man introduction. So, with this introduction, regardless if he has a 10-minute scene, one big 10-minute action scene, or he has a couple of small scenes added together to make about 10, 20 minutes on screen, or whatever, this introduction is going to be everything. Because if this introduction into the MCU of this new Spider-Man is kind of lackluster, it's not really exciting, the fans are going, I guess it's okay... Then the solo film might lack a little bit in the fact that people are not really excited, but if Tom Holland and the Russo brothers who are directing the film knock it out of the park and show that Spider-Man is back, he's in the MCU, he's going to be there, he's going to show up, it's going to be awesome, then the solo films I think are going to be huge, hugely successful. I think that people are going to be more excited to see this newly redone, younger Spider-Man. I think it's going to be a good thing. So what I would like to see officially from his Captain America Civil War debut is a couple of small scenes and supposedly there's a big huge fight scene that happens at the end of the film. Rumor, <laughs> the rumors flying around for everything. Um, but uh, I would like to see him in a couple small scenes and then seeing involved in a big action scene. That'd be really cool to see that. Um, but uh, I have faith that Marvel and Sony and the Russo Brothers directors for this film will uh, be able to do this right and actually pull it off. Now let's get off into a little bit of speculation about the Sony solo films. Mainly I want to get into, uh, the first thing is that they're obviously not going to do an origin story. He's been Spider-Man for quite some time. Apparently he's been swinging around in the MCU. We, we just have not seen him swinging around in the MCU because we've not been, been introduced to him as of yet. So, personally for me, uh, there's been... Rumor mill keeps on going that we keep bringing this up because that's all it is because there's no confirmation on this that he signed for three solo Spider-Man films for the Sony, you know, uni the Sony side of things for the solo Spider-Man films. And if that's the case and there are three, that's three films uh, that apparently he is signed to do or maybe, you know, or they could only use him for two or whatever and they could decide to do a third film with another character or something. I'm not really sure with him and another character. Um... But I'm, I'm hoping that with these solo Spider-Man films, they go with villains that we have not seen as of yet in this past in the past Spider-Man films. Um, what I really liked the fact that when they when they rebooted Spider-Man in 2012 with the Amazing Spider-Man number one, they had the Lizard. Amazing Spider-Man two had Electro, and they also had um, uh, pfft, Electro and the Rhino. Yes, I was I was blanking there for a couple seconds. Um, now, what I would really like to see, I mean, I don't know if they're going to do this. They're, prob they're, they're eventually going to do Venom again. Venom is going to show up again. Carnage would be awesome. Uh, Craven the Hunter, Mysterio, Chameleon. And uh, they have introduced Kingpin in the universe of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Kingpin is around. Vincent D'Onofrio is Kingpin. So I'm saying, I'm telling you guys, it would be awesome. If they brought in Daredevil for the second or third solo Spider-Man film, and Kingpin was a villain in the film, but maybe he wasn't the main one, but he was a villain that was always around in the uh, Spider-Man solo films, and it finally comes to a head with Daredevil involved. Maybe even Punisher, because they have actually casted John Berthanol, I think it's I have to say his last name, probably butchered it. Uh, as Punisher, so maybe that'd be there too to see Punisher, Daredevil, and Spider-Man take on Kingpin, uh, Chameleon, maybe Rhino as well, a new Rhino, but, you know, th there's a whole lot of things they could possibly do, but for me, if I could po if I could pick the villain they first go with in the first Spider-Man uh, rebooted film with Tom Holland as Spider-Man Peter Parker, I would personally pick... 
I would I would I would personally pick uh, Mysterio. Let's go a little bit different. Let's change it up a little bit. Let's not try to reboot a villain we've already seen. Let's not do the typical Green Goblin. Let's not do the typical Venom. Let's do something a little bit different. Mysterio. You know, start it off on a different uh, a, a different view, as you will, a different direction, if you will. And uh, I think that that'd be really interesting for the fans to see. I mean, it would it would definitely be a very interesting direction because we're not going in the typical okay we're gonna go venom oh we're gonna go rhino we're gonna go green goblin we're gonna go a little bit different or the vulture that could happen dr octopus even though he was in the second spider-man film from the toby mcguire area but or the era area wow um but i think that mysterio would be a very interesting pick for the first villain in the rebooted spider-man films with tom holland as uh, peter parker now let's move on over into what I would like to see him do in the rest of Phase 3 with the rest of the uh, Marvel movies after Civil War Captain America. Now obviously he could pop up in any of the solo films of these characters, Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange, Black Panther. It'd be weird, but it'd be interesting to see, but I highly doubt it. So I think that once Civil War comes out, He's accepted. He has a first Spider-Man solo film in 2017. I think he will become an Avenger at the end of his first sp solo Spider-Man film in 2017. Join the Avengers in 2018 for part one of the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. Avengers Infinity War part one. He's going to be an Avenger. He's going to show up and he's going to kick ass with the Avengers. And I believe he's going to be in both Infinity War films and it's going to be a fun time. I don't personally see him showing up in solo films. I think he's going to be dedicated to the Avenger films. And uh, so there's that. Oh, also I forgot to mention, it would be interesting if a Marvel MCU character showed up in the first solo Spider-Man film. There's been some rumors back to that once again in this podcast. It's all you hear all day is rumors. There's barely any confirmations and 99% of rumor mill, rumor talk. Uh, is that Robert Downey Jr., a.k.a. Iron Man, is going to show up in the first solo Spider-Man film in 2017. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to be on his contract, because since technically Spider-Man is owned by Sony, but it's still being... It, the movies are... The, the solo Spider-Man films are being produced by Marvel, but yet the character uh, rights for the live-action Spider-Man is still owned by Sony. So I wouldn't know if... I guess I guess it would work on the contract because it's a, it's a Marvel-produced film. But uh, I would think that if they want to make sure that the first solo Spider-Man film that's being rebooted with Tom Holland in 2017 is a huge success, one big thing that could add to the potential of the success would be Robert Downey Jr., I think with that addition, if he came in, he was in the film for a couple of scenes, or he was a part of the he was a part of the cast for some reason, I think that'd be very exciting. I think that'd be really interesting to see that. To see the dynamic of the king of the MCU having a lot of scenes or a couple of scenes in the solo Spider Man film versus maybe he'll have five minutes of screen time with Spider Man at the same time on screen together. Um, but in, this, in a solo Spider-Man film, that might be a different dynamic than a Civil War situation where Captain America and Iron Man are fighting it out and then Spider-Man's there with a bunch of other people with like 20 billion other characters. I think with the solo Spider-Man film and then Iron Man shows up, it'd be a different vibe. It would feel kind of interesting. It would be different, of course, but I think it'd be very cool to see that. So there's that. Other characters I could possibly see from the MCU joining the Sully, the Sully, wow, solo Spider-Man film, potentially the first one or any of them. It'd be kind of cool to see Black Widow maybe show up. Maybe Black Panther shows up after he's officially introduced and we, he's become a well-known character. Doctor Strange would be kind of interesting. Uh, Captain America might, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Hawkeye, I mean, I know people don't like him as much as the other characters, but Hawkeye would be kind of cool to see that. Um, Scarlet Witch, I mean, v the Vision, Ant-Man, the, the, the possibilities are endless. I guess it just depends on what the story, uh, what the story really needs and what character would fit that purpose. Why would they show up and be a part of this film or be a part of this, uh, scene or whatever that would cause them to show up out of nowhere? Because we all know that in solo films, 
a lot of the times, an, not another Avenger or another MCU character that has a big name is going to show up out of nowhere. It just does not happen. It only happens in, in the Avenger films. So there'd have to be a really good reason why they'd be showing up. So that's my thoughts and uh, about all of that. I think it's a good casting. Once again, I'll say that again. I think Tom Holland is a good choice. I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And I'm glad they officially confirmed he's, he's casted as Spider-Man. I'm glad they confirmed he is going to be in Civil War. We just got to see how much he's involved and basically how the fans and the audience responds to him being Spider-Man, to him being on screen with the Avengers plus 5 billion characters in Civil War. (laughs) So hopefully it's positive and hopefully hopefully it's for the best. Let me take a sip of the drink and we'll continue on with our second topic, guys. Okay, let's get into our second topic, which is... Batman Arkham Knight discussion, first impressions, no spoilers. Let me get that out of the way. Say one more time if you skipped on ahead, no spoilers for this section. And if I see any spoilers in the description, I will automatically delete them, or description, comment section, I will automatically delete them because I'm not going to uh, basically allow people to spoil this game for potential people. That have not played it yet. I've, I've, uh, actually this evening I have uh, beat the entire game. I beat the main story. There is a bunch of side missions you can do, but I beat the main story. And I'm telling you guys, without giving away any details, this is one of the best uh, story type games I've played. Uh, basically, this is one of the best stories from a video game I have played in a very long time. There's been a couple of games, the couple of games I play a year, usually I play about 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 games a year, and a lot of the times the story can be good in some sections, but there's some moments where I'm just kind of like, I'm not really invested in this, I'm not really enjoying this. Batman Arkham Knight got me hooked the first day, day one when I picked it up. I was playing it for about three to four hours long. I was just enjoying it, doing a couple of the beginning of, of side quests and side missions, but sticking to the main story, and I beat it within four days of having the game, and I loved it. I loved the story. It had a lot of twists, a lot of turns, some great surprises, some really intense, dramatic moments. I was actually quite shocked with some of the things that were shown in this game, and I can tell you guys right now, without getting into, you know, reasoning and spoilers and specific details, I understand why this game is M-rated, okay? This game's not over the top. I'll tell you this. There is no, like, you know, horrific killings. There's no, like, you know, dismemberment of bodies. There's nothing like that, like sickening stuff and disgusting stuff you would see in a horror film that you would see in theaters. There is a lot of dramatic and really intense moments, and there are some images and some things they put in this game that would not be able to have a T rating because it's so intense and just so in your face and crazy. So for me, I understand why it got an M rated rating, but uh, you know, for me, I mean, technically it could pass as T, but there's just some stuff that they have implied that they don't necessarily, they don't have to show you it's implied and it's really freaky. And it bothers you. Uh, if you're really deep with involved in the story, there are some moments that make you go, oh my god. And there's some twists and turns, like I said before, and some surprises. I'm so happy that nothing really leaked about this game before its release. I like the fact that there was a bunch of stuff they were able to keep secret. Because nowadays, with video games and movies and television shows... Things get leaked, things get spilled out, someone says something they shouldn't have in an interview, or basically somebody from a company or somebody who was able to play a pre-alpha version of a game, or able to see an early screening, or watch a uh, you know, read a script or something for a television show, and leaks out information, and basically ruins you know a potential surprise, a potential you know um, twist that could be in the story. So I'm really happy that the stuff that was basically uh, kept secret in this game until you uh, bought the game and actually played it, was able to keep secret. I like the fact also that the gameplay footage they showed off about this game, I can tell you this, guys, up front, because uh, it was actually very cool to see this, that that the beginning of the game, essentially, 
is the gameplay trailers we actually got to see uh, throughout the uh, last couple of months here. Uh, time to go to war. Uh, time to go to war footage. Uh, the actual officer down, um, and, you know, basically the gameplay trailers, the six, seven minute long gameplay trailers, the one where you go and save Poison Ivy, and the one where the officer's down and you get the save the officer, and then you pull out the Batmobile, evening the odds. Um, that is basically the beginning of Arkham Knight, and I'm glad that they actually showed those, because that basically kept more of the secrets, you know, to, you know, away from the uh, general audience because they showed basically the first 20 to 25 minutes of the game with gameplay footage, but it, even though you've already seen it, maybe you watched the trailer hundreds of times, it's still enjoyable to play those missions because there's a couple of things they have left out from the gameplay footage to kind of keep it a little bit more secretive, but um but I really enjoyed the twists and turns in the game. I'm loving the gameplay mechanics. I'm really enjoying uh, the actual like puzzles you have to do, which people complain about the fact that you know that that's one of the things I don't like about the Batman games. There's some puzzles you got to do, and uh, it's just kind of tedious and boring. For me, it it switches up the gameplay. If this game was 12, 13, 14, 15 hours of just non-stop punching people and doing all these combos and using your gadgets and all that kind of stuff. There's an audience that would like that, but for me, I would get kind of bored after a while because it's literally the same thing over and over and over. And I will have to say within this section of talking about this, is that adding the Batmobile into the game... I think was a really nice addition. Number one, it's badass. It's freaking awesome. And it also adds a new element of combat with fighting off the tanks that the Arkham Knight sends, to, uh, sends towards you. And uh, basically it adds a new element of fighting in the game. You can actually take down these tanks and your uh, your vehicle, your uh, Batmobile is very mobile. It's awesome. It can turn into a tank instantly from turning into an actual Batmobile, just flying around Gotham City and just roaming around and jumping over, um, you know, going over ramps and stuff. It can turn into a tank instantly and take out uh, these mini helicopters that will fly at you and taking out missiles and taking out these uh, cargo um you know these car these enemies that are coming after you, these cargo or drones or whatever, and it's uh, it's a pretty intense uh, to add that into the game. I think it was a really nice addition, and I think also adding that on top of the fact the new combat, I like the fact that the uh, Batmobile is also another addition to you know doing missions, following vehicles, taking out vehicles. Uh, while you're actually run, r like rushing through uh, Gotham City, you're actually going after a vehicle, you're chasing it down. You, you're using the Batmobile to kind of send you off into a new direction. You're going to be jumping out of the Batmobile, you're getting back into it, you have to go do this with the Batmobile involved. And so it adds a new dynamic and adds a new element to the game because it makes it more interesting to where instead of you just flying around Gotham City and all this stuff like the previous Arkham City and Arkham Origins if you played it, then adding this Batmo Batmobile switches it up. It, may it makes it to where you're not always doing constantly the same thing. There's some missions dedicated to you flying in the air, going to a building, going into an area, or some missions are dedicated to you, you using that vehicle to pull down this, uh, to shoot like this wire at this uh, wall, pull it down, and then you can actually run through it or whatever, or you pull, you pull up a ramp so you can fly over, so you can use it to destroy a... Uh, a sentry thing or whatever so you can get your uh, get Batman through to continue on with the mission so they really figured out a way to make the Batmobile useful and effective and it's not just a nice vehicle just to drive around and be Batman they actually made the Batmobile actually useful which I think is really really cool because they could have easily just added the Batmobile in and all you do is just drive around Gotham City if you want to and take out a couple of bad guys but they actually made it to helpful with puzzles, figuring out obstacles, using it and applying it for missions. I like the fact that you can remotely control it. You don't have to be in the Batmobile to use it. You could be standing like 50 feet over here and then you can like, you know, remotely control the Batmobile to drive around, shoot at enemies, help it help you through an obstacle. You can continue on your way and the Batmobile will be waiting for you whenever you call it again. So that's a nice addition there. Um, so there's that. Uh, I really enjoyed the flying of this game. I really enjoyed that as well because, you know, you're actually flying when you dive down and you're, 
picking up speed and then you zoom right back up and you're continuing on you'll reach higher and higher and higher batman at this point is like superman he just he's flying it's really really awesome to see this uh to actually get them to get the flying down right and it's so smooth it's it's so epic uh the dual action uh, g uh game mechanic which is um only in a couple of the uh uh, sections of the game, I was trying to think of the word there, uh, throughout the game where you actually play with Batman alongside with this character, with this character, or this character. They show it in the trailers, Catwoman, Nightwing, Robin, and you can actually, it's it's so seamless. There's no lag, there's no moment where you have to wait, and then you can do it. You can seamlessly change from Batman to Nightwing, taking out a character, and then use both Nightwing and Batman. And, and if you're Nightwing, starting a dual-action takedown, Nightwing kicks in the guy in the face, and Batman comes up and then punches him, and then you switch to Batman, and then you can do the dual-action. Batman kicks the guy up in the air, Nightwing comes down and hits him right in the face, and then you switch right back to Nightwing. And you can continue on. It's so seamless. And you, even when you're in the middle of punching a guy with Batman, you can click that button and seamlessly transition to Nightwing, knocking out a guy, and then continuing on to take out people. It's so seamless and it's really badass. I love this mechanic because it's not like you're fighting alongside with Nightwing and you're fighting alongside with Robin or Catwoman. You can actually tr transition with these sections during these fight moments to those characters and continue playing as them and taking out enemies and it's really cool to see that. It's really awesome to see the, that Rocksteady added this in to basically allow us to play as these characters because in Arkham City... I was I was able to play as Catwoman because I purchased the Catwoman uh, story thing or whatever where it adds in particular missions that kind of fill the gaps of the Batman story in Arkham City. So you can play as Catwoman and roam around Arkham City or whatever. But in this game, as of yet, there is no story to where you can actually, you know, roam around as Catwoman or Harley Quinn or, you know, whoever, Nightwing, Robin, so... It's really cool to see this mechanic so you can play as these characters for a couple of minutes within these sections and enjoy playing as something somebody different. One final thing I would like to say before I continue or basically uh, wind down this uh, podcast. I'm recording this thing very late, so I'm very sorry if my words get kind of slurry or kind of, you know, uh, not understandable because I'm recording this very late at night. But uh, I wanted to get this thing done, and I'm getting it done. So the one final thing I would like to say that's a huge improvement from the past Ar Arkham games to this one that I think Arkham Knight has done a lot better is the side quest missions, the side missions besides the main story. In previous Arkham games, most notably Arkham City and Arkham Origins, is that the side missions you will be able to do if... You were able to, to be around at the right time when it pops up, or you talk to a certain character, or you trigger a certain event, then now you have the side mission to actually go on. So that's cool and all because you get to explore Arkham City, you get to explore Arkham Origins, you can fly around and basically discover these side missions, these side quests, and it adds more layer into the story. It might be connected to the main story, it might not, but that's how it worked. What I really like about Arkham uh, Arkham Knight, I was about to say Arkham Asylum, what I really like about Arkham Knight is that they have incorporated a very cool way to incorporate these side missions to kind of be introduced to you as you complete through the, the entire main story. When you start the main story and you start getting a few of the things done and you're able to do like connect to this wheel essentially where you can scroll around and there's one section where you can actually pick any of the gadgets. One section you can see all the challenges you have completed within the Arkham, uh, the, uh, within Gotham City. Then there's one wheel dedicated to the top, like right at midnight. If you're if you're looking at it at a clock, at midnight is the main story. And then as you sc scroll right around throughout the main story, as you're continuing to complete the main story. Alfred will just randomly announce to you, hey, you got a couple of uh, new things that are going on within Gotham City. Uh, there is these um, there is these people in peril. There is like this guy that wants to talk to you. Not going to get into spoilers what they are if you haven't played the game. Um, 
but some of them are very intriguing, some of them are connected to the main story, and some of them are just like, you're just surprised that they're in the game at all. There's really cool ways they've introduced some, they basically brought in some villains you previously thought, hey, are they, are they, uh, are they ever going to come back again? They have really cool ways to make some of these side missions are connected to the main story, and some of them are just on their own, and some of them have villains you didn't expect to see within the Arkham Knight game. So it's very, very cool. So with this wheel, essentially, and within as you're comp uh, going through and completing the main story, continuing on against the Arkham Knight, against Scarecrow, you're slowly being introduced to these different missions. Now, after you complete like three or four of the main story uh, sections, a new, a new side quest, a new side quest over here. And you can see the, um, the whole entire completion you have on that save so that's one thing I really like about this game that they've added in is that as you're completing the main story you don't have to run around and try to find the side quest you find the side quest by completing the main story and then Alfred gives them to you and you can choose whether to continue the main story at that time once you're introduced to new main uh, to, to, to new side quests I almost said main quest but new side missions you can continue on the main story or you can go do the first section because they're all divided in different sections a lot of them are simply you know you do this section here and then it's not unlocked yet until you continue the main story now this section with the continuation of the side quest or side mission now now you can continue on so that's really really cool there so I think Arkham Knight as of right now I cannot say for 100% certainty certainty excuse me that this uh, that this is the best Arkham game I can't honestly say that as, as of right now I've had a lot of time to play Arkham Asylum I've had a lot of time to play Arkham City I can tell you Arkham Origins is not the best game it's definitely a fun game but not the best game so, as of right now, I believe Arkham Knight is, it's an amazing game. It's an amazing game, but I can't personally say as of right now if it is the best in the Arkham series because I've had a lot of time with Arkham City. I love that game to death, but as of right now, I need more time. I need more, uh, you know, uh, I need to explore the world more because my whole thought process was, I want to do a couple of the side missions, but I also want to get done with the main story because I'm really intrigued. I was so hooked into this story, so I really wanted to get it done. So once, so now that it's done, I want to continue and do these side quests and basically explore Gotham more and basically, uh, basically uh, figure out if I think this is the best Arkham game. Or if it's you know kind of on par with Arkham City, or if it's better, I'm not really sure. But as of right now, um, it's an amazing game, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer that question if it's uh, better than Arkham City soon or Arkham Asylum soon. So there's that. That is the podcast, guys. Thank you guys for watching. What are your thoughts about Tom Holland being announced as Spider-Man? What are your thoughts about Batman: Arkham Knight? No spoilers. What are your thoughts about both those topics? No spoilers, once again, for Batman Arkham Knight. Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.